You think getting a tattoo is good behavior? I don't care about it, but it's not good behavior. Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchu alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host Chamber. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, just chilling out here at the home office for possibly, you know, the last uh, the last time in a while. We have so much personal news to share today. It is I mean, like I have a little bit of news. You got some good news. Like you have some. You got some stories to tell, but like, I mean, I mean, let's just start it right there. You uh, go with your go with your personal news. So I uh, was offered a position uh, yesterday with a cannabis company, uh, and I am at a ten out of ten right now on the uh, on the happiness scale with uh, with regards to that. Uh, yes, I mean, I've been uh, it's been almost a year, uh, almost a year to the day. Uh, that I was released from my uh, previous position, and uh, I've taken my time, and uh, you know, as as fate would have it, uh, a cannabis company reached out to me a couple weeks ago, and we've been in the process for you know doing interviews and all that stuff, and finally got the approval yesterday, uh, and yeah, um, it's it's cra- it's fucking great. Uh, I've, I I can't this wrap could, my head around. You have you have no idea, like. I know you're happy, but like I am elated for you. <laughs> like it is, I, I am so genuinely happy and excited for you because this couldn't be a better <laughs> job for you. <laughs> like you I know can't what I mean? think of a better job, right? And it's it's like you know I've been preaching. I feel like uh, the last couple maybe months on this show is like patience and patience with crypto, patience with your you know positions, patience all over the place and. You know, you don't have to. It's been a year, right? And you were in a nice position where you didn't have to go rush into finding nope. something different. And uh, you were patient, and patience paid off. And uh, so I'm, I'm very happy for you. It was like it for me working for Sam Adams. That was like my dream job right. for so yeah. long. And then. Uh, I got like moneyed out of that job because I needed to make more money and there sure. just wasn't going to happen there. But uh, like, so now with you, with this, and you were just telling me it's a really, really good offer. Uh, there's nothing that could be more fitting for you. Oh, no, man. It was yeah, good offer. Tons of room for like upward, uh, you know, promotions and stuff like that. Yeah, because they're, I mean, like fairly new industry, right? So, so well, fairly the new industry is only three years old in Canada. Right. Um, so basically, anybody, anyone with the most seniority has at the very most three years of, of experience. And you're like, uh, I've been smoking weed for way longer than that. <laughs> we were just well, joking to him about it before the show that it was a cosmic gumbo. <laughs> It sure is. It sure is. I mean, you might not get a Christmas present, but, uh, you know, I don't care about it, but it's not good behavior. <laughs> Only the but, truth. Uh, I think you should leave fans. We'll get that one. <laughs> you got to drop but, the nuggets in there sometimes. I love it. But, you know, it's, it's really good. And to be honest with you, I had another, I was deep in with another company as well for a bigger position um, in, a, in an industry that, you know, wasn't. You know, it it wasn't as fun. Like it was so similar I, to your old industry. Similar to my old industry, yeah. Um, and but just talking with the, it was, it just seemed like the level of stress that I was going to be like if I had taken this job. I, I was getting panic attacks just thinking about it. I'm like, fuck, I can't. Oh, homie, don't need that. You don't need that. No, ain't it, nobody got time. For it that. was like I can do it. You know what I mean? Like I can, I you know, I can ramp up to like a hundred. And you know me, you know me working. But like at you've been off for a year. Like you don't need that stress anymore. You I don't can need go to r- work yeah. this job. You'll be very, very good at it, and it'll it's probably so, be relatively uh, stress free. And if it is stressful, very, you just uh, get high on your own supply and you call it a day. That's it. No, but the, all the t- like, literally everybody that I've spoken to at the company, like exactly what you think. 
Like it's like it's, <laughs> it's just you know very chill, very you know. Is laid it like back. crunchy chill though, or is no? It like, like 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 just like me. Just like imagine a bunch of oh me's man, working. a bunch of use. Yeah, just wow. a bunch of me's. Like everybody, I'm like, huh. And I think they recognize that because you know the gentleman I was talking with today, he's like, he's like, yep. He's like, we just saw you know that you'd be like. You know, this is you're, you're you're kind of like one of our types, and I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm very happy for you because uh, there was a time here where your I feel like your your self confidence and your uh, oh. had had dwindled a tad. all time low, all time low, buddy. Ninety seven percent. I was gonna say tell the you told me a joke about you know what you said to your sister yesterday. I thought yeah, no, I, was, I, I was talking to my sister. I said. Uh, you know, I, I keep, I try to keep a positive attitude, but I said, you know, my sister and uh, the one that I talked to. Yeah, um, the good sister, the not, good not sister. the Kevin sister. <laughs> I said, uh, I, I said, I'm going to be honest. I said, my confidence was really shook over the last year. It was at an all time low of, you know, like 97%, <laughs> which is like, you know, suicidal level. Yeah, right, for you, yes. <laughs> yeah. But That's I said, funny. after yesterday, I'm back at, you know, back at 100 as, as per usual. So. Uh, it was uh, it was good. Uh, I mean, yeah, just like a big not, not a big weight necessarily, but just uh, I could feel my my overall uh, you know sense of well being go up. You know what I mean? Just like sure. just chill, I've just chilled out a little bit more now. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm pumped for you. So um, that means the show's over, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> it's I'm just, if you haven't figured this out by now, uh, show's yeah, over. Uh, <laughs> the so. I have the opposite news. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't done this show in two weeks. And I, in the uh, past, <laughs> in the time that you've gotten a job, I decided to go the other way. And I said, F it. Here's the, now's the time. I'm going to go do this stuff full time, whether that's the podcast stuff, DJ stuff, all the other things I got going on. And uh, so I am now uh jobless i guess no that's not the way it's it's you are now full-time crypto yeah i I, you know i didn't want to say that because that is a uh top signal if kiss of death right that's the top signal right so um it's funny because you know part of what's allowed me to do that is like the income i'm earning with like axie infinity and everything like that and we were talking last week and i'm like yeah i I did it just like i'm gonna put in my resignation and then the servers went down immediately for for weeks and i'm like well that was the top signal (laughs) and gmi not gonna make it it could have been time better like it was immediately after like literally hours after that show it was was ridiculous (laughs) but so yeah lots of exciting personal news for us so you know, I mean, this show we skipped last week, but there's a lot of we have a lot of bantery uh, stuff to cover. So, I was actually uh, invited to a, I guess I would call it a crypto VC, like venture capital crypto <laughs> guy meetup this right. past week. <laughs> uh, it was Tuesday through Thursday, and like. That's how rich these guys are. They just party on the weekdays. Yeah, you they, know? Do, they don't care. They don't <laughs> wait for Friday. Guys, right. They're, they're like, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, right? So, um, and I was the poorest and dumbest person there. By that's, like, well, that's the room by I like to orders, be in. By orders of magnitude, right? Like, I'm, I was hanging out, rubbing elbows with, uh, with guys that are, you know, stratospheres above me. But... Uh, it was a great time, super fun, made a lot of connections. Uh, ja Rule was there, so got to got to hang out with Ja Rule. He uh, was the grill master Tuesday night and decided he was going to grill us all dinner. Uh, you've seen that video. That was, uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> so, My wife could not get over that, by the way. Like, she was like, are you? She's like, of course Bunchy's hanging out with Ja Rule. What, of like? course he is. Did you see my Like, you sent me a picture of him smiling and and having fun and then i sent i don't know if you got the picture of me that i sent you back where i was alone in a dark room smoking joints by myself <laughs> i did uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i wish you could have been there with us it was a, a good time but uh we're gonna have to get you i we're gonna have to get you to <clears throat> the states for 
NFT NYC, I think. I, th- I think that's I think that's the one. I think that uh, that's probably the time. It's in November. <laughs> plenty of time to come, and maybe we could do a little podcast meetup. We could host a little thing at a bar. We could do something like that. That would be a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of people well, give. <laughs> A lot of people give, uh, but so so part of what, what I thought was the best part of this for for us and this show was one of the guys that was there. It was Mike Dudas, and Mike Dudas, for those of you who may not know, is the founder of the Block. You know, like oh, right, like the Block. <laughs> yeah, like the Block, like crypto. the Block Crypto, like the one we use every show every for three show. years for news. <laughs> Like that one. And so, you know, just shooting the shit with him. And this I go, is by far the best part of the story. Yeah. Like, and I, drum and rule, I look, whatever. This is the best part. And I go, Mike, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Mike, I got to tell you something. You know, <laughs> we appreciate all the stuff you've done with the block. We use it for our podcast every week for like the last three years. So pretty awesome. And I go, what's the deal with Yagita Katri? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, no. And I'm like, yeah, it's like a running joke on our show that we are such huge Yogita fanboys. And he's like, dude, she is the absolute best. And so, and it does like, not shock me. I'm like, it doesn't shock me at all. We always end up with her articles. And I'm like, so what are the odds that maybe you'd be able to get her on our show? And he's like, I'll do it. I'll make it happen. (laughs) He's like, she would probably be honored to come on. (laughs) And I'm like, well, let's check that right there. Probably not. But (laughs) but, uh, he's like, yeah, email me. I'll make it happen. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was the the (laughs) perfect, the perfect thing. All of these years of using the block and reading Yagita Katri articles finally culminated in me meeting Mike Dudas and just being like, dude, uh, we're 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 Yugita fanboys. Hook us up. <laughs> Fucking cosmic gumbo, right there. Cosmic. Man. Uh, they always joke about it being a cosmic gumbo. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so that was uh, that was my week. So we've had a I have had a very very interesting week. So um, and we are now officially this show is part of the dgen network so that launched last friday as well which i don't think we've talked too much about on this show because we skipped last week uh that's partially why we had to do all the launch stuff for that but dgen d-g-e-n dot network you can find all our shows there now you can find articles on crypto and nft we even have some of our very own telegram oh yeah like our this own is... people, like our own crew that we've, you know, built relationships with over the years in our Telegram. So 5 a.m. is writing articles over there for us. Uh, JP Kaz. Anybody else? Uh, Stacking Toshis. Oh, Stacking Toshis. So Chambers writing articles for us also. <laughs> Um, you know, all the real heavy hitters that you want to see over yeah. there. So, so yeah, we got Rec Podcast got their fingerprints all over this one. Yeah, we right, we do. We have uh, it's a cosmic gumbo. We, we run deep. It's a, it's a cosmic gumbo over there. So that is all of the things we got going on. So if you like this podcast and you like hanging out in our Telegram, uh, come over, hang out in, in DGen. We're actually going to have a Discord there. And somebody sent me, I think it was 5 a.m., sent me a bot the other day that will actually put all of our discord or tie our discord into the telegram so like in the wrecked podcast channel on discord we can kind of see both so we should probably merge over to that discord at some point because it is going to be a pop in happening spot you get news you'll get drop info you'll get articles you'll get uh, it is fun constant convo and we haven't even really opened it up to like the public yet so um, yeah yeah. If yeah, so if you're if you're on Discord already and you you know you know how to use it and you enjoy being on there, I think you'll I think you'll really enjoy. We it should once. probably just drop a link in the show. Yeah, notes it'll too. be it'll be in the show notes. It'll be cool. in the show notes for sure. Yeah, so dgen.network is where we're at now and you know, it's built by your boys. So come help us out. Uh come check us out. Give us a little click action over there. It's it's really like honestly I think you'll be shocked. You'll be like, 
I, I, these, love, these I love that that's how you describe it because we have just set expectations for ourselves so goddamn low that it's yeah. like that is like oh yeah people probably don't think we're capable of something decent like this like you'll be shocked you're like what no it's impossible you're like but who did this for them it's, it's, right <laughs> i mean we had a dev do it for us but, but and dev really is, but dev is dead Dev is dead. Um, but, yeah, but I mean, we have you know ton of ton of great um, you know contributors that are putting together great articles. Uh, you know, like basically are you all write we, any articles. I can't. I can barely put out a tweet without a fucking spelling mistake. Come on. <laughs> um, you know, I I'm I I've been reading. I, I think I've read every single one that's gone through DGen so far. I think we've put up about twenty articles already. Um, so I, I like reading and kind of I like to punch up stuff. Uh, so I kind of work with, uh, you know, just to, to make things a little uh, a little more SEO friendly, that kind of stuff. But you're the you know, I, I, I like to help out. Uh, so I probably won't write anything myself. You write good, funny stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, not my not my not my game. Fair enough. That that basically no one would want to read what you have to say, anyway. <laughs> or could read. So do, <laughs> so, so do, do America. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's let, let, enough of our personal news here. Let's get into some market stuff. Uh, what again? We're going to start every week the same. Now, what are you feeling about the market currently? Like we had, uh, like you know, people were losing their shit a couple of days ago. Yeah, sky um, was falling. Sky was falling. Then I look at it, I'm like, it's not really falling. It it hits support, you know, uh, like it hits support at about twenty nine eight, like it's it's been doing, uh, and then it bounced up. And it's so it's it's kind of like Bitcoin. I'm just talking about Bitcoin specifically here, but you know, it's kind of caught between that twenty nine eight and that thirty three three range. Um, we're at thir- like 32.4 right now, somewhere in there. Um, so I, f- I, I mean, I see it kind of bouncing in between those two levels of support and resistance. Um, we could see some more downfall, though. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm 60%. Uh, I, I'd say there's, a, uh, I'm on this, I'd say 60-40 that we go down below 29.8, though. Uh, you think and- it's going to break that? I think so. I think so. I'm just not seeing. I might be wrong. I pro, you know probably wrong, but <laughs> I, I just I don't know. I, I I don't see positive momentum like to get to to recapture like you know 42. Like that's where we would need to get really. I mean like, that's like it's it seems so far away. Yeah, like 42 is where we would need to get to, like. Even but like I haven't even, even 40. seen us break thirty five. No, last... we haven't. We haven't broke. Um, we haven't broke thirty five since what day is that? Since July fourth. So, so July... do you? Wow, really? That that long? I guess that's not that long ago. Eh, but... Crypto time is long. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, it was it was quick. It was thirty five, and then back down to thirty three, and then it broke down to twenty nine. You know so we mean? kind of always talk about basically life or death here right it's either breaking out and we're going to the moon or we're going to be sitting here on the su- in line for soup somewhere mm-hmm. with, at it being you know 10k again right but uh yep. what are the odds that this thing just kind of range bounds for a year in this area i, Do I don't think, think that's ye- possible I, I, I mean it's possible i don't think a year um i don't think a year to stay in the same range i think within that time like maybe three months um but even that seems like a fairly long time i think within the th- i think within the next three months so what, what does that put us like august september october yeah. uh so by the end of q3 beginning of q4 uh, you know we i i could see a down like i think maybe q3 we see some lower lows like maybe all the way down to 20 and then Q4 is usually a good month for Bitcoin. So I could see that, you know, maybe restarting the trend and then we build our way back up to, you know, I don't know, somewhere. But I, I could see Q3 maybe being that, you know, ranging and then maybe quick dips, uh, quick, you know, some knife catching down to 20K. Uh, the more this goes on, the, 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 the less I'm thinking we get below 20K. Um, I feel like if, if we were going, we, we would be there by now. Yeah, typically we see these like big 
quick. Yeah, so like I could see a I could see a quick one down to twenty that gets bought up, and then maybe that that signals the the local bottom. We would talk about local tops all the time. Maybe that signals the local bottom, and then we we make our higher highs, and we kind of you know from that twenty k uh, make our higher highs and and start kind of you know r- shifting the. Uh, you know, shifting the trend back to uh, to bullish, and then you know, hopefully capture all time highs. You know what I mean? I would love that. And, I, and, and honestly, at this level, like I'm trying to, I'm always trying to equate it to like what's happened in the past. So like, like what's 32k? You know what I mean? What's 30k? Is that the same as like 10 to 12k before? And if 10 to 12k is the same as before, or like uh, you know, what's 8k? You know, because because we had like 10, 12k, we were ranging in for a while back in you know a couple of years ago, and then it was like 8k for a bit, and then we saw that big plunge to like you know like high threes, low fours. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. and then took off. So I try to equate the numbers. So like, is is 32 the same as you know 8 to 10 or 10 to 12? And then is twenty the third? Like, I think I think like twelve k is the three k. I think twenty k is the eight k, and I think thirty two k is like the ten k. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or like you know somewhere in there. But I'm you know again this is no. That, I mean that makes if sense. If you're taking my advice, you're you're fucked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I just try to I just try to equate because that's what we saw right. Like, there are levels of support and resistance, like major, major ones that we saw in, you know, 2018, 2019. Um, and and we're, we're just trying to find those. Because, I mean, we've put in now enough time between, you know, February and now that we can really see where, you know, the, the big supports are and the big resistances are. Yeah, I think you're totally spot on there. So... Um, that's interesting. I, I like are, your what's your your fear index at? Um, like uh, I'm not I, I'm not like again. I think just because of like what we've gone through in the past. Like I, I, my fear is not like high, but if it was my first time, my fear might be high that we were going lower. So like like I said, like I said before, like have some you know maybe get out. Take take some of your position out, keep it in tether or keep it in USDC, and just wait. Like I got, I have some money, you know, put a set aside for those those big dips, um, and hopefully buy them up, right? Yeah. So don't, I mean, uh, financial, you know, financial advice, whatever. <laughs> I hear so many people say this is not financial advice. Um, it's, so you're it's, just going, you're just yeah, leaning, just financial right advice, into okay? It. Financial advice. Don't don't be all in, uh, you know, in Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. Uh, be, you know, it could work out for you, but it's also probably a good idea to have uh, some of that position cash. in 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 you know good old cash. Um, cash. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, again, by the just, way, just little, in case. By the way, a little uh, speaking of the cache piece, uh, I was I, I was opened up to some interesting information uh, about some of these stable coins this week. At, oh, when I was really? At this, when what I was do you at got? Meetup. We could talk about it. Uh, so uh, again, this is not a this is not a paid shill or anything of that nature. But uh, so. I was talking about Mike Dudas before. Mm-hmm. Um, he his other job is he works for Paxos, right? Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Familiar yep. with Paxos, like Pax, like yeah, P A X, right? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Paxos Global, and so they actually, while we were there, he put they put out a um, an article on CoinDesk that basically shots fired at USDC and Tether, essentially. So Paxos came out and revealed all of their assets that back their stable coin. Mm-hmm. And in doing so, they also put out the assets that back USDC and Tether. And basically, um, no real surprise, because I feel like we've always kind of knew these things, especially about Tether, but uh, their reserves are relatively illiquid, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like you're, so Paxos, here 96 percent cash and cash equivalents four percent u.s treasury bills so paxos is a bank right 
Uh, there you go. This is good info right here. Yeah. So USDC reserves, 61% cash and cash equivalents, 13% Yankee CDs, uh, 0.2% municipal bonds, 5% <laughs> corporate bonds, 9% commercial paper, 12% U.S. treasuries. So Yankee when you think CDs? About, What's a... <laughs> I think I think it's Daddy Yankee CDs. <laughs> just, it's just, they own thirteen percent. They just bought up Daddy Yankee CDs. <laughs> this is amazing. I don't know what uh, that is, but I got to get in. <laughs> <laughs> but so essentially, there the the important thing is sixty one percent cash and cash equivalent, right? right? So you know when they're talking about illiquid. Uh, the rest of it is built up of things that aren't if if everybody tried to cash out today they essentially could not right um tether reserves what's your guess in commercial paper which is essentially the same cash and cash equivalents what's your guess Fudge. I have to double check what I'm holding. I hope I don't have Tether. I think I have USDC. I was in USDC actually, and I, I still am at the time be for the time being. That's, but this is good information. Um, I don't know. Fifteen percent. Forty-nine point six percent. That's better. Commercial paper. Eighteen point four percent fiduciary deposits. Uh, One point six other investments, including in digital tokens. Uh, Two point two percent treasury bills. 2.7% reverse repo notes. I don't know what that is. This is more financial stuff than I'm right. Uh 2.9% cash, 10% corporate bonds, funds, and precious metals, 12.5% secured loans. That seems honestly, I, again, I'm not a fine. <laughs> this is this is not financial information because I don't know what I'm talking about. That sounds even at the very worst one of the three that you just mentioned, it sounds better than a typical bank because I'm pretty sure a typical bank only has like a 10% reserve in all yeah, the money. Yeah, but, they but your, money's, your money's guaranteed, right? Like, Is it? Well, yeah. So like the uh, FDIC guarantees your deposits up to 250000 or whatever, right? So okay. in your bank account. So if you... there. Essentially, to protect the run on banks that we right. saw in like the Great Depression, right? right? So that's why that's there. That's what the FDIC does. But these, uh, you know, Tether and uh, USDC are technically unregulated stable coins, right? Right. Um, so they're backed substantially here by more corporate debt. Obligations and I don't know enough cash. about this, but I I carry most of my like uh, like like my dollar my dollar pegs. Uh, I think all of them are on FTX. So I don't know what... I feel safe enough on FTX, like even using their... You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, uh, so I don't know what... like It says like US dollars, but I think it's I think it's USDC, but I'm not 100% sure which one they specifically use. Because I think they combine all of them. So if you have more than one, uh, it, it kind of it's all combined together on uh, on that platform. But I, I should probably do a little bit more research. Into well, that. so they're like they're, they're technically right, fully backed. But what this actually means in terms of how they have uh, the the illiquidity piece, right? Right. Really, that's the risk. Saying if everybody wanted to swap their cat or like cash out today for whatever reason, say there's a back a black swan event. Yeah. The way USDC and Tether are set up, that would cause illiquidity risk, right? Right. Because their investments that we just went through have maturities and they're potentially several years long, right? So they're right. not cash. No, that makes sense. Equivalent, right. So um, that's that's interesting, right? So like mm -hmm. you know, we've talked. It's I feel like we've been having this stablecoin conversation for years, right? About Tether FUD and all this stuff. But now when you see all these things actually released, um, it's it's interesting. So, like, does it make them less safe just day to day? Maybe not. But if you're going to park your money there, you need to know the risk, right? Right. <laughs> so, right. And, and you're dealing with potentially tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of sure, dollars yeah, for absolutely. some people, potentially millions of dollars for some traders that are trading with gigantic size that uh, often go to cash right so mm -hmm. and and go to these stable coins so that's uh you know interesting so 
that was something that I learned because he was literally putting out this art coin desk article while we were there. That's awesome. And he's like, he's like, shots are being fired today. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, this is it. But it's interesting. So it's like something I never really knew. And, My wife uh, was so impressed with you, uh, you know, quitting your job to go full time. And then like a couple of days later, you're rubbing elbows. Well, in, so what, the they, circle. what I what I told these guys, which is actually technically true, was uh, that was not a coincidence, right? So like I got invited to this thing about a month ago and all of it was leading up to me wanting to do this and I actually had real work obligations for travel that I would have had to do, right? So like I should have been uh, in Pittsburgh doing a, you know, doing some meeting and I'm like, if I'm going to do this, this is the time because I should I should take advantage of this opportunity. Absolutely. Right? Right. So I was joking around with the guys on, on Wednesday night. And I was like, uh, they're like, oh, yeah. So, you know, what'd you do? I'm like, well, I actually quit my job to be here. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> like, that yeah. seems irresponsible. <laughs> ja Rule, ja Rule, that seems ja Rule. irresponsible, bro. <laughs> yeah, ja Rule, ja Rule was like, man, you're an idiot. <laughs> Uh, geez. That's but odd. yeah, it was really funny. But so. man, like, you know, I, I get credit from some of my family members for taking risks and thinking outside of the box. Um, usually my mother-in-law, she's she's very enamored with what we do and little things that she hears. Um, and, and she's very, you know, very proud of, of some of the, you know, just outside of the box and, and really kind of taking, you know, little risks here and there, and bigger risks sometimes. And, you know, we forget like you and me you know we'll you even more so than me like i feel like i'm even I, you're you're ahead of me with with risk taking i would say that's probably or, not a good thing <laughs> <laughs> but in a good like in a good way like but there are so few people that feel comfortable even taking you know minimal risks let alone like quitting your job and like diving deep in and you know so obviously some people aren't programmed for that you're the type of person that's going to like you know, I you know I know how you work, uh, so it, you know, <laughs> I have friends that if they did the exact same thing, we'd be having an intervention right now, <laughs> blasting blasting shots in the air. Um, but, well, I uh, feel like most of our audience will relate to this piece because you know it, this idea of why we're in crypto is mostly financial, right? You know, yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, we we want to have this financial freedom, and um, so. I think the biggest thing that kills people is momentum, right? Like momentum meaning if you're you there's so many people myself included that do things just because they're doing them already, right? right so whether exactly. that's a shitty job that you hate or yep. whether it's a relationship that you're in and it's just the <laughs> same thing it, it, you just I hope do my it wife isn't listening. <laughs> But I, I, dude, I was stuck in one of that, in one of those situations for the longest time as well, like from the relationship standpoint. And right. it's like, it just felt like, you know, you're just doing it because you're already you're doing, doing it. it. And, right, absolutely. And it might be making you miserable. And I'm just like, look, if I, I had built enough of what I wanted to do to make the risk worth taking, and my opinion is if I fail, uh, there will always the job market. Will there be will there. always be jobs. <laughs> you know what I Absolutely. mean? Like there will be a job when I go back. Uh, but my original goal here is, uh, I keep telling my wife, I'm just like, no, I told you so. It's like that's my main goal. Nobody is gonna get to tell me I told you you shouldn't have done that. That's that. Has anybody gonna get to tell ha, has anybody said that? Uh, well, because <laughs> so. like I, I mean, I'm a pretty good judge of like whether a decision is good or not. And for a lot of people, maybe this decision would not be good. But for, sure. like, I have zero worry uh, when it comes to you. Like I, I, it does. I'm not like I'm like no. It's gonna it. be it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's I gonna appreciate be, that. It's gonna be um, better than fine. <laughs> my my mom does not want me to do it. Of course she does. It. She's your mom. <laughs> uh, she uh, actually my parents don't even really know yet. So. <laughs> Uh, so my dad knows it's coming. Uh, they didn't know it was coming I love right it. now. But uh, I figured I would gain some momentum be like, and then just show up one day and be like, oh, yeah, I haven't worked that job in a month. <laughs> that would be great. Be like, that's, that's ideal. <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, that's – but, yeah, so it's it's going to be a fun little adventure here. But uh, so I Well, that's exactly it. it. I think that's, that's a, a, an adventure. I mean, like people forget – 
you know, we're all going to fucking die one day. <laughs> okay? Like, it's not, this is not forever. Like, fucking take a fucking shot once in but a while. But you know what? It's funny, though, because, like, you, on the opposite hand, you've been without a job for uh, yeah. a year. and Thriving. <laughs> and Right. Well, and thriving, but, like... For me, I'm sitting here like, oh, man, that's the dream. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to do my own thing. And right. you're like, I can't wait to go get a job. <laughs> yeah, like my dream is, I don't know. I, I, my dream is like having something like, and I think this is, I, ideally, I think this is what it's going to be happening is having something to do on a daily. You know what I mean? Just something to do that's fun that I enjoy doing. And then, you know, crypto and stuff being the icing on the cake and ideally have a ton of icing uh, and then get to a point where dude you love icing i fucking love icing <laughs> um but get to a point where you know what i mean where i know 100 percent that i don't need to work anymore do you know what i mean like yeah yeah f- you know like i'm like oh okay i fucking don't need to work at all and then maybe make that decision down the road but uh i mean i probably don't right now like right now i could say like i probably don't need to work uh, all I, I wanted was I don't know yeah. I don't need to work. All I wanted was my work to be something I liked, you know. Right. Like, that's all I wanted, and it wasn't that, the it wasn't the well, case. Well, that's and that's a huge difference job. too, right? Like this, like my new job is going to be like it's it's going to be a fucking joy, right? Uh, like if then, you were going to go back and do the same thing you were doing, you yeah, probably not. Ideal. In six months, you might be like, oh, "What did I do?" Yeah, I made a horrible decision. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? But anyway, should we go through a couple more of these news stories? I agree. Yeah, I think we should. All right, let's finally forty fucking minutes in here. Let's get <laughs> to the news. <laughs> So we talk, we talked, man. We talked stable coins today. Like we're on we're a full on crypto podcast again. <laughs> Where did that happen? I love it. Uh, <laughs> what, what 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 article are you starting with here? Um, I, you know, I, I'm gonna start with the weird. I don't know if this guy's weirder than Elon Musk or not, but I'm gonna start with Jack. Uh, <laughs> all these billionaires seem strange to me. Uh, you know, this, if you ever become a billionaire, you're going to be strange as hell. Oh, I'm already strange. Just people don't understand that I'm strange yet. Um, but yeah, these guys are fucking weirdos. Uh, <laughs> so this is from, obviously, Yagita. Uh, shout out, Yagita. I'm going to tag you in this episode as well. So I hope you listen. You got you to tag uh, Yagita and Dudas. <laughs> yeah, well, I got I got Dudas uh, already written down here. But obviously, Yagita's getting tagged as well. Uh, Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey has said that Bitcoin will be a, quote, big part of the company's future. Uh, This is the first time Dorsey has publicly spoken in such depth about how the world's largest cryptocurrency could be integrated into Twitter's products. Uh, On Twitter's second quarter 2021 earnings conference call on Thursday, Dorsey said Bitcoin is the, quote, best candidate to become the native currency of the Internet. and that it will mean that, quote, people and companies can freely trade goods and services anywhere on the planet. Uh, if the Internet has a native currency, a global currency, we are able to move so much faster with products such as super follows, commerce, subscriptions, tip jar. And we can reach every single person on the planet because of because of that, instead of going down uh, market by market by market approach, uh, Dorsey explained. Uh, he went on to say, I think this is a big part of our future. I think there is a lot of innovation above just currency uh, to be had, especially as we think about decentralizing social media, you know, w- w- which we've talked about before, uh, and providing more economic incentive. Uh, so I think it's hugely important to Twitter uh, and to Twitter shareholders that we continue to look at the space and invest aggressively in it, he added. So uh, Dorsey went on to say that Twitter is not alone to think in that direction. Uh, he gave an example of Facebook and its crypto project, Diem, formerly Libra. Remember when we used to talk about Libra? <laughs> Man, what the hell happened to Libra? Uh, it's now Diem. Uh, oh, is it? Um, yeah. So wow. carp- I, I, I'm assuming they took the carpe. So just don't seize it. It's just the day. Just the uh, day. <laughs> just the day part. Uh, saying, quote, there's an obvious need for this uh, and appreciation for it. And I think that an open standard that's native to the internet is the right way to go, which is why my focus and our focus eventually will be on Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin enables speed, more innovation, and opens up entirely new use cases, according to Dorsey. So this is... Uh, Didn't Elon is... tweet about uh, ETH yesterday? 
Fuck Elon. Uh, yeah, I think there's. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I think there's. Yeah. So uh, Bitcoin reminds uh, Bitcoin reminds Dorsey that the uh, of the early Internet, he said uh, in the recent B word conference alongside uh, Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, it's deeply principled. It's weird as hell. And it's always evolving. It just reminds me of the Internet as a kid. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the tweet from Elon was. Do you remember? Which? The one that he... I, I'm not sure which one no. he's referring to there. Um, but, yeah, so, I don't know. If, if I mean, obviously Twitter, uh, like Jack and, you know, whoever, whatever his name is over at Facebook and Elon. Zuckerberg. These are, yeah, Zuckerberg. Uh, you, speaking of Zuckerberg, we never talked about... Did you see that uh, video of him on July 4th? Uh, no. Like, <laughs> oh, surfing? Yes, yeah, uh, so whatever that weird yeah. thing was, and he's holding the flag. Like, yep. wh- wild <laughs> so stuff. Great. Wild this is stuff. So, great. <laughs> uh, so uh, just just wild. And, it, you know, he was pretty, it looked dope. Uh, this sure and, did, but it's just like, you uh, know. It's so, it's so weird, though. At the it, same it's, time. it's just like, oh, hey, Siri, show me the thing I would never think I'd see today. And then that's what pops <laughs> up, you know? Like, right. Well, it reminds me of that, you know, that gif of like the guy in the storm holding the flag and he's like walking yeah. out. That's what yeah. it reminded me of. Uh, just the, you know, the Zuckerberg uh, version. So cool. I, I think this is I think this is pretty big news, obviously. And the more positive, you know, Bitcoin news, the more Bitcoin gets integrated into social media, obviously, social media being a huge part of literally everybody's day, you know, all seven billion of us for the most part. Um, so it, it, it's it's this is good. I mean, this is why I'm not overly scared uh, of, of the market. I think it's going to do what it does. But at the end of the day, you know, right, Bitcoin, like the. the- like when you think about oh, what that means, right? Where you're not scared of the market, it's because the industry as a whole is not fucking going anywhere. No, exactly. <laughs> like this is just getting more and more ingrained in everything that we're doing every single day. And I mean, there's too many big players now that are recognizing what, you know, luckily we've seen since 2017 and what people have been seeing since 2013 and things like that and it's just not going anywhere right so no. if it's thirty thousand dollars today and twenty thousand dollars tomorrow eventually there, there's no doubt okay. in my mind there's no doubt in my mind we're going to see a new all-time high for uh, sure like, like there's no at doubt. some point in after t- in some point in 2018 2019 i really questioned it uh but i don't feel that way anymore yeah, like it's it's we're gonna have a new all time. Like the market's gonna do what's gonna do, and then after a while, it'll do. I mean, I I'd, I'd have to pull up a gold chart, but like look at a gold chart. Look at a, a, a you know a more traditional market, and it'll probably start doing that after a while. You know what I mean? Not the huge fluctuations we've been seeing, but it'll start to stabilize some. And you're gonna have some you know you're gonna have some up years. You're gonna have some down years, but. Overall, Bitcoin will stabilize um, at a higher point than it is right now. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt. It's, uh, you know, it'll do what a gold chart does, which is yeah. give Peter Schiff a boner. <laughs> 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 Eventually, a- Bitcoin will do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> Bitcoin providing future boners <laughs> to Peter Schiff. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so you know we're we're talking about a lot of regulatory stuff today. U.S. credit union regulator seeks industry input on decentralized finance and stable coins. So uh, I mean, this is what we're talking about, right? Like mm-hmm. the United States National Credit Union Administration's governing board approved. Thursday, a request for information that seeks to learn more from credit union industry about their views and positions on digital assets with significant focus on DeFi. So basically, I mean, now we're talking national level, getting advice from regulators right. on what they see happening here. So again, none of this shit is going anywhere. Right? <laughs> like, you know, it's just going to get more and more. And then, you know, you're going to get this regulation it's gonna come but it's like it so what right it's gonna it just gonna be better for us in the long run i think you know um but yeah uh, that's that's more i don't want to go too much into it because it's a lot of stablecoin stuff which we already kind of covered so um but 
they're talking DeFi as well. And I mean, that's a lot. Uh, that's, you know, good news from a sh- infrastructure standpoint, I believe. Um, but you got one more and it's again, buy or girl. Buy or girl, Yagita. Uh, this girl. one is, um, it has to do with Binance. Uh, crypto exchange Binance US could go public. Uh, says Binance CEO CZ Zhao. Um, our, he says, quote, our partner in the U.S. is looking at a potential IPO. Um, he said that on Friday at the uh, Re- Redefine Tomorrow event organized by SCB 10X. I don't know what that is. Uh, the venture arm. Oh, here it is here. Uh, the venture arm of Thailand's oldest uh, Siam commercial bank. So that's huh. interesting. Uh, the IPO route, however, is not 100 percent fixed yet, he said. Uh, after the Coinbase listing earlier this year on NASDAQ, the U.S. is now uh, an ecosystem where crypto companies can go public, according to Zhao. Uh, indeed, uh, several U.S.-based crypto firms, including Gemini, Kraken, and Circle, are looking to do just that. Uh, as for Binance itself, Zhao uh, said an IPO is not in, in the immediate plans, but that might change in the future. This is a, a notable change from what Zhao told the block earlier this year. Uh, at the time, he said uh, Binance wants to take a more crypto native path, uh, you know, by expanding the utility of its uh, utility token, BNB, instead of the traditional IPO. Uh, but now before Binance itself could go for an IPO, it will, it will need to change its company structure, said Zhao, uh, because most, regular, uh, most regulators want to see a headquarters and an office uh, or a legal entity. Uh, yeah, this, quote, says, this says he's looking for a new Binance CEO with a very strong regulatory background. Yeah, no So I, I think that's the theme of today's show, man. <laughs> yeah, regulators. Regulatory, regulatory gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. To, to me, I might be wrong here and I might be way off. I just feel Binance is, has lost its juice over the last 12 months. No way, man. Dude, remember that chart I showed you the other uh, last uh, show a couple of weeks ago? They have like 45% of the uh, in- the entire industry's volume, Ex- exchange uh, volume. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Is that, I don't know. Is that legit volume? Like, I don't know. Well, I, 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 I don't know. So, but I don't know. You, I don't know. It just, I, I, I feel like, I might be, again, I might be. Well, it's, just, it's also maybe well i guess you could still use it but like i don't know how many people use binance us though like right so i mean i i don't know that's why it feels that way but i mean you you in canada can use binance but you choose ftx yeah i don't uh yeah i do the ftx route but i don't know it just feels hashtag not an ad (laughs) not an ad (laughs) um yeah i just feel like there there's always something kind of sketchy with binance uh that you know, a couple of years ago was not necessarily the case. And then I'd say just over the last 12 months, it's just like, eh, like they're always like, oh, like, oh, we're going to need to restructure in order to, you know, uh, hit the guidelines for these types of regulators. Oh, we need a CEO with regulatory background, you know, uh, earlier, like they said earlier this year, we wanted to, do, you know, do something more with BNB. But, you know, obviously the price of BNB is uh, dropped since then. Um, so maybe it's, you know what I mean? Like maybe he was hoping it was going to be a, a, a straight shot to the moon with BNB. Now it's not maybe not necessarily the case. Oh, now we need to pivot and get an IPO. I don't know. Just talk. Just talking out loud. I, I just the more and more I think about it, I'm not a I'm not a I, huge fan. I don't think you're like crazy wrong. I mean, it's not. I don't think you're totally far off there. Um, I feel like a lot of people think that about finance. Yeah, right. I, I, again, I don't. I don't watch enough feedback. Like, I mean, on... CZ is not like Justin's son. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, you know, not far off. Uh, maybe. <laughs> 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 like maybe that's like like a better version of yeah. uh, of of you know of of Justin. But like, yeah, like I, I think f- I'd rather party with Justin's son though. All day long. All day long. Oh, for sure. More than more so than CZ for sure. Yeah. Justin would be except, like, but CZ's way richer though. Yeah, but probably Justin's. He's doing all right for himself, I'm sure. Um, but do you remember those? Remember when we used to have those conversations? I wonder what that four million dollar lunch with Warren Buffett was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was Justin's son that paid for that one, yeah, right? Not yeah. season. I don't. Yeah. I don't actually think it ever happened. I, I don't think so guys, either. Like, canceled or something. I, I I occasionally think about the parties. Uh, remember when you know R.I.P. Um, you know Mr. McAfee, but those parties that we'd hear about that John was at with some of the crypto oh, people. Yeah. Yeah, man, those uh, those sounded like a good time. So whoever was at those parties, I'd like to party with. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm yes, agreed. <laughs> oh, and speaking of uh, speaking of John, uh, <laughs> our video that we did, our interview that we did with uh, Mr. And Mrs. McAfee, uh, I don't know, like a year ago yeah. or more. Like it's got like five k views now. Like our uh, uh, we yeah, like off right after because of his hundred uh... percent. Yeah, like uh, we have uh, our. You can listen to our show on YouTube, uh, but it's typically just the audio and with like a little you know static background. Uh, but with the second John interview, we we recorded the video, and I think when we first you know up to like prior to his passing. You know, it may have had like 150 views type of thing. And then I checked the other day because we were get, I was getting all these comments. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And yeah, I think it was just under like 5,000 views, I think. Wow. So, yeah, Jeez. crazy, right? Awesome. Yeah, direct that to the, but just throw it on the DGen YouTube now. Yeah, maybe I will. That's not you a bad idea. probably should. And then just see if we could direct people there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Are we landing this bird? Yeah, I think so. All right. This was a fun one. We had so much nice, fun, personal news. Uh, and I think we did a decent job at crypto also, maybe. I don't know. But that is going to do it for us until next week. Don't get wrecked. And that is financial advice. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. You can help support us by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and become a wrecked patron by signing up for a monthly tier on Patreon.com. That's Patreon.com forward slash wrecked podcast. Don't get wrecked.